Hi everyone, welcome to US Immigration Hub channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to file form I-864, which is affidavit of support. I already have a video for uh, uh, I-864 for petitioner as a primary sponsor with no children. But this video is going to be for petitioner as a primary uh, sponsor with uh, children. So, if you are new to this channel, uh, my name is Timon, and I make videos for a family-based immigration uh, to simplify the immigration process for immigrant and non-immigrant visas. If you are new to this channel, uh, please subscribe, share, hit the notification bell, and give us a big like so YouTube can share the video with more people. First of all, I am not an attorney. I'm here to help you based on the instruction that comes with this form and also based on the experience I have with this form. I filled this form for my spouse uh, two years ago. So if you're ready, let's get started. Uh, this is a new version of uh, IA64. Do not file the old version that expired on 2024. This is a new version that will expire on 2026. Do not make that mistake, find new version. So let's get started to file this form. Uh, the first top right here is for USCIS use only. Do not touch it. The bottom part as well, do not touch it. It's for attorney if you use one only. So for us, we're gonna start where it says start here. Type or print in a black ink. Just I wanna give an idea right here because a lot of people ask me this question as well. You know, you can type when you print it. If you see something is missing, you can add it with a black ink only black ink do not use any other color only black ink one thing i want to mention right here as well do not correct anything that's been already typed my advice don't do that so now let's go to part one which is the basis uh, for filing affidavit of support so first we can uh, i the person filing this affidavit of support this is my name sliman baker I am the sponsor submitting this affidavit of support because you're going to see only one box. As I mentioned, this form is has a multiple purposes. It is affidavit, uh, affidavit of support, but uh, for multiple uh, sponsors, joint sponsor, first, second. Uh, anyway, I have multiple right here. This is the basis of filing. So for us, we're going to select 1A. I am the petitioner. I've, uh, I failed or I am filing for the immigration of my relative and it's going to be for my spouse with two children so the other one does not apply for us i already have a video for joint sponsor as well if you want to watch it so if you are filing this form as a sponsor you must include proof of your uh, u.s citizenship u.s national status or lawful permanent resident if you're going through in bc you will submit that to NBC anyway so you don't have to include this uh with this form because if you're going through nvc you will upload that so part two which is information about the principal immigrant uh, family name it's bushy that's my spouse last name given name it's bushra uh, 1c is middle name is in a now we're gonna go to mailing address uh, this is address right here is gonna be a foreign address if your uh, uh, spouse is still abroad, if you're going through NVC, uh, consular processing. So this is uh, in care of name. Do not leave that one blank. A blank. I'm sorry, because a lot of people leave the, this one blank. Must be full name. Bushi Bushra. Uh, state name is 20. Hey El Masira. That's a uh, uh, city where he live. Uh, city or town is Kenefra. Uh, Provence is uh, Kenefra, and postal code is 54,000. And the country, of course, is Morocco. This address will be different from country to country. So now let's go to other information. We're still talking about the principal uh, immigrant. The country of citizenship or nationality, it's Morocco. Date of birth is 01-01-1990. Alien registration number. This is very, very important because a lot of people miss that one as well. To be honest with you, I missed it on mine. But uh, it was a good thing. But... It, they did not reject my uh, 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 my uh, form, so they accepted. So the good thing. But I'm gonna show you to right here how we get it. You will go to your I-797 approved uh, notice. 
So you will see it right here. Beneficiary alien number. If so we see A, I already hide mine right here. My uh, spouse A number, it's right here. You can get it from here, from your I-797 notice for action. Or, and now for this is a card, I'm sorry, for a petitioner. This is only for the beneficiary right here. The beneficiary. We're going to talk about, uh, about the, the sponsor as well. But now let's focus on beneficiary. You're going to put it right here. Alien registration number right here. USS online account. She does not have one at this point. Seven, daytime telephone number. This is a Moroccan telephone number. It's 212-695-1201. Now let's go to part three. Information about the immigrants you are sponsoring. I am sponsoring the principal immigrant named in part two. Yes, that's my spouse. Now two, because the, the immigrant, the principal immigrant now has children. In this video, I said we're going to do two. So uh, I'm sponsoring as well the following family members immigrating at the same time or within six months of the principal immigrant named in part two. Do not include any relative listed on a separate visa petition. So it's right here. So uh, that's my sp for my spouse, and this is for my children. So family member A, it's it's Baker. Uh, given name is Ali, and middle name is Ine. And relationship relationship to the the immigrant is a child. A lot of people do this, but work, work is a son. Child is a son, just to specify. Or you can do it like this: a son or a child. Both works. Uh, date of birth is 01-01-2020. Alien registration number. He does not have one at this point. USCIS online account. He does not have a this. He does not have one either. Family number two is this is my daughter Sarah. It's Baker. Baker Sarah. Uh, relationship. You can put daughter instead of child. Uh, date of birth, it's 01-01-2022, it's January 1st, 2022. Alien number, alien re registration number, she does not have one at this point. USCIS online account, she does not have uh, one at this point. So, uh, just two children. Uh, for family member three, four, and five, we're going to leave them uh, blank, or once you print it, you can add in A because the other B does not gonna let you add in A, which is in A. Now let's go to part three. We're still talking about part three, I'm sorry. Information about the immigrants you are sponsoring. Enter the total number of immigrants you are sponsoring on this affidavit, which is includes the principal immigrant listed in part two, any immigrant listed in part three, item number 128 and if applicable, any immigrants listed for these questions in part 11, additional information. Do not count the principal immigrant if you are only sponsoring a family member until more than six months after the principal immigrant. Number is three. How we count that? There is my spouse in part two and a part three, I have two children. That's three. So I hope I'm clear on this one because it's confusing. Now let's go to part four, uh, I'm sorry, part four, which is information about you the person filing this uh, petition, which is sponsor. As you mentioned, this is for a petitioner as a primary sponsor. Family name, it's Baker. Given name is Sliman. Middle name is Ine. In care of name, do not leave this one blank. Baker Sliman, uh, this is a United States address, 100 Robert Run, Indianapolis, State of Indiana, and the zip code is 46254, and the country is USA. Is your current mailing address the same as your physical address? Yes. If you answer no, you must answer right here. If you answer yes, this one will gray out and we're not gonna be able to answer anything right here. So now let's go to other information. Uh, the country of domicile, I live in the United States, is USA. Date of birth, that's my birth, that's my birthday for a uh, petitioner. It's uh, January the 1st, 1980. City or town of birth is uh, Kenifra. I born in Morocco, I'm a naturalized citizen. State or province of birth is Kenifra, and the country of birth is Morocco. 
and a social security of course one 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 you cannot support anyone if you don't have a social security because it means you are not working so you must have a social security to support someone so now we're gonna give your citizenship or residency status i am a u.s citizen and the sponsor a number is two 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 that's sponsor area number how we get that a lot of people get confused let me explain uh, this one right here if you are a u.s citizen by birth you do not have a number however if you are a u.s citizen by choice which is naturalization you have a number and that a number will stay with you until you die even if you become a u.s citizen you still have a number so we have i'm gonna do two over here i'm u.s citizen or a green card holder i'm gonna show you a number for both now let's talk first about the u.s citizen this is naturalization certificate as you can see it is right here a number that's you copy this a number from your naturalization certificate if you still have your old green card it's right here for green card holders this is your uh, a number right here so for both u.s citizen and green card holder they have a number i'm talking about people did not born in this country they come as immigrants let's be clear if you are a u.s citizen you do not have a number i'm sorry if you're born in this country you do not have a number so sponsor uscis online account if you have uh, a receipt number that starts with i o e number means you have uscis online account i'm going to show it to you as well uh this is uh, i-797 this is uh, let, let's talk about my experience right here i find i want to reform my spouse and uh, uscis decided to process my uh, my own one theory online and they sent me this notice right here as i 797 c called notice type uscis online account access notice and they sent me the code online access code i want online and create my uh, account uscis online account as you can see it right here that's your uscis online account number it's right here that's the one you copy and you can see the receipt number starts with i o e number so copy this uscis online account number and put it right here that uh, sponsor sponsors uscis online account number if you don't have it if you don't have a receipt number that starts with i o e number means you do not have uscis online account now let's go to number 14 i am currently on active duty in the usa uh, us armed forces or us coast guard um, in my case is no let's now talk about part five part five is sponsors household size this is the most tricky part of this form why as i mentioned because this form is used for uh, multiple uh, is used by multiple people a joint sponsor uh, primary uh, primary uh, petitioner as a primary sponsor that's why it's confused so provide the number you enter the part three item number 29 is number three my spouse and my two children yourself is one if you are currently married enter one for your spouse do not enter if i'm sorry do not enter one over here because your this your spouse is already included in this one right here that's what is confusing because this for example if a joint sponsor is filing this petition he must put one right here if, he's, if he or she is married this is why this this form is confusing i try to be clear but a lot of people get confused so just to be clear if you are a petitioner your spouse is already included right here just put zero right here so if you have dependent children enter the number here do not add anything as here because your children are already included right here if you are a primary uh, sponsor as a petitioner so but if you are a joint sponsor or uh, a joint sponsor you must enter this information right here and i have a video for joint sponsor on my channel if you want to watch it if you have any other depend dependents answer the number here is zero zero the total is going to come four i'm not going to go through all of them right here so the number is four so if you have sponsored any other person on the form i64 or form i64 easy who are now lawful permanent resident enter the number yeah i forgot about this one right it is very very important if you sponsor someone uh less than five years and they still a uh, green card holder you must uh put one right here because you still obligated to support them until they become a u.s citizen so that's my uh, uh i forgot about this one right here just in case if you support someone before and he's still or oh, she's still a green card holder 
So how, household size now is four. How we count that? We have three over here, which is my spouse, my church, and my two children, plus myself, that's four. So now let's go to part six, sponsors, employment, and income. I am currently employed as engineer. Name of employer one is ATA. If you have a second employer, you can add it right here. And if you are self-employed, you can add it in number four. So number five is retired since I'm still working, unemployed, I'm uh, still employed. My current individual, uh, my current individual annual income is sixty thousand dollars a year. Income you are using from any other person who was counted in your household size, including a certain condition, the intended immigrant. See uh, form I sixty four instruction. Please indicate the name, relationship, and income. Yeah, this is very, very, very important. But in this case, it does not work. I don't want it get you confused right here because if you use this form as joint sponsor you must answer this information right here especially if you file a tax return jointly with your spouse so for a petitioner as a primary sp uh, sponsor and your spouse and your children still abroad you don't have to add anything right here so we're gonna skip that so we're gonna go to uh we're still talking about part six so number 20 my current annual household income is Sixty thousand a year. So we're not going to add any other income. Just uh, the people listed in item number eight, eight, eleven, and fourteen, and seventeen have completed from I sixty four. If you are a household uh, member, so we don't have to do that. So we didn't add anyone. Just uh, petitioner as a primary uh, sponsor. Now we're going to go to uh, federal income tax return information. So have you filled a federal income tax return for each of the three or most tax, uh, tax years? Yes. In case you did not, you're going to select no and you have to attach the supporting document why you missed, why you missed it. Uh, optional. Anyway, just check it because you're going to upload your tax return to NVC anyway. Just check it. Even if it's optional, just check it because you're going to upload your last three years of your tax return to NVC account. Uh, my total income adjusts the gross income. How you find that? You go to uh, form uh, 1040, easy or 1040. You will find it. Just look for adjust gross income or uh, A uh, G I uh, on uh, uh, 1040 or 1040 easy or 1040. You can see it and then enter it right here. For most recent year 2023 is 60,000 and 60,000 2022 and 60,000 in 2021. So in case you did not file a uh, tax return because you, your income was below the IRS required level, you can check this one. And of course, as I mentioned, you, got, you have uh, to attach the support document with that. So part seven, the use of assets to supplement income. You know, a lot of people use this uh, part right here if their income uh, is not good. They use the assets. Uh, bank account a lot of some people they have a lot of uh, account their income is not good but they have a good amount of uh, money with their bank account they can use that or they have a lot of uh, real estate they can use that as well but in our case we're not going to talk about part seven we're not going to use it as well so part seven we're not going to use it so now let's go to part eight sponsors contract statement contact information declaration certification and signature it is very important any lines will be uh, you will have a penalties uh, by lying to the government so you gotta be clear on this so please do not lie well this is uh, just read this because it, as i mentioned just this is a law uh, about this form so statement uh, sponsor statement i can read and understand english and I have read and understand every question and instruction with this affidavit and may answer to every question. You, if you file this form by yourself, you're gonna check this one right here. In case you use interpreter, you're gonna check it. If you request somebody to uh, file the form for you, you must check this one right here. So in some cases, a lot of people check both because they use interpreter and the prepare, and you use the prepare as prepare at the meantime as interpreter. And you must file part nine and part time uh, and part time. But for us, we're not going to use 
in an interpreter and we're not going to use the prepare so uh, sponsor contact information uh, 317 uh, 111 you can add this one that I have sponsor daytime telephone number as well uh, sponsor email address is uh, sb at gmail.com it is very important to include it so we're still talking here about sponsors contract statement contact information declaration and certification and signature now we got to sponsor signature uh, first I'm gonna date it is uh, 84 Eight zero four twenty twenty four, and then I'm gonna sign it. That's the tricky question. Do not initially or put your full name. Print it first, then sign it, then scan it, then upload it to NBC. I'm hoping I'm clear on this one because a lot of people ask me this question. Print it, then sign it with a black ink. Do not use any other color. Then scan it, then save it in your computer then upload it to NBC. So I hope I'm clear. So for part nine, we did not use any interpreter, but if in case you use one, just you're gonna check the that one and then the interpreter section, then you enter the interpreter information right here. If you use uh, for signature, it's the same thing. The, the interpreters, uh, interpreter must sign it after you print it, not before, do not initialize or put the full name of interpreter. He or she must sign it. Same thing for uh, prepare. If you use one, you must sign it before you know you upload it to uh, to NVC. If you use one, but if you do not use one, just keep it uh, keep it blank. As I did in this video, I did not use no interpreter, no prepare. So I keep I keep them blank. So now we go to part eleven, which is additional information. And I have a video on how to use this form, which is very simple if you want to watch it. So uh, this is uh, the end of this video. I hope you like it. If you do, please subscribe, share, hit the notification bell. Thank you and see you next video.